Hi everybody, my name is Carly. I'm a Community Activation and Learning Officer for Melton City Council and normally when our centre is open I am based at the Curranjane Community Hub. While we are in lockdown though we are giving you some online content for the school holidays this term three holidays. We are launching it with a fluid art video. So I'm going to show you how to do some fluid art at home. Um, so I'm using a canvas. I'll go through some of the supplies that you'll need. Um, so obviously you'll need a canvas or a piece of plywood or something that you can paint onto. This is just a 50 cent canvas. So you can get canvases from Spotlight, um, Riot Art Online, Art Shed Online, and their delivery is usually pretty quick and they're quite reasonably priced. You'll obviously need your colours of choice. Um, for the base of your fluid art piece though, you will need a plain white paint. So that's what you pour over the entire surface. Then you pour your other colours and you agitate and move them around and they use the white to, um, they'll manipulate themselves around the base the, it's quite a thick white paint base. Um, so to thin down your paints to make them uh, more of a fluid art consistency, you can use water. Um, that's a really cheap way, especially if you're just starting out at your first one. You can just use water. It will impact the colour and the integrity of the paint a little bit though. So if you don't want the colour and the integrity of your paint impacted, you can buy a few different products. So there's um, pouring mediums. So I've got two here. Uh, there's a couple of different brands. Officeworks have them. Again, Riot Art, um, Spotlight, I think, also have pouring mediums. You can also buy a product from Bunnings called Floetrol. Um, so there's, yeah, you can use pouring mediums, this Floetrol uh, product, which is an acrylic paint and stain conditioner. Um, so it just, it, it thins the paint out without impacting on the color. Um, and it can also help give you some cells if you, um, want your paint to separate a little bit on the artwork. Um, so yeah, pouring mediums, flow troll or water, if you just want to thin them down enough as a first go. Um, you can also add some powdered pigments to your paint. So I've got a bunch of pearl in different color metallic um, powdered pigments. Sometimes I'll add them to an existing color if I want to give it a metallic finish. Otherwise you can just sprinkle the pearl on top at the end and just give some highlights if you want. You can also buy, now that fluid art is a little bit of a thing over the last few years, you can also buy high flow acrylic paint. So they come pre-thinned out for painting. You can buy pouring paints at Kmart as well. There are some packs at the moment. You can get four different colors and they show you on the back how to do your own fluid art painting and they are pre-thinned out. So you literally just have to get the canvas and um, put those paints together and pour them on as per the instructions on the back. So what I might do is I might start mixing my paints up so I can show you the consistency. We'll do a, um, we'll do a 50 centimeter canvas today and I'm going to use um, a couple of different shades. Oh, there's a pink there, a peach, a bit more of an orangey. They call it Naples yellow, but it's a bit of a, a bit more of a brighter orangey peachy color. And I am going to use some gold as well. And there's just a sandy color there as well. So we'll just do a Dutch pour to start with, which is literally where you mix all your paints into their required consistency. You pour them in a layered white manner into one cup and then you pour that cup onto the white base and manipulate that around and you'll get the marbled effect through the paints. There are a few different fluid art techniques. We'll go through them after we've done this first Dutch pour. Um, so I'll just go and get my paints prepped and we'll come back and do the canvas. Now I'm just showing you here, I've mixed probably a quarter of a cup of the pouring medium with a quarter of a cup of the flow troll and I'm adding the white base. So as you can see, it looks like the paint is separating, but you just need to continue to stir that and the paint will eventually come together and you will notice it's just got a bit of a, it's probably gonna need a little bit more pouring medium to be honest. Um, but I will just keep working that into it. You'll notice the paint thin out the longer you work the product in. So I don't know if you can see, but see it's still a little bit marbled. So the product is not worked in enough at the moment. Um, so I will continue to mix up my colors here. So look, start with about a quarter of a cup of your pouring medium and then add your colors in. Obviously, depending on the size of your canvas or the water, whatever it is that you're gonna pour the paint onto, it will depend and impact your ratios. 
um, but you'll have a fiddle. You probably want it like a runny yogurt. Um, you don't want it like water consistency. Um, you probably want it like a, a smoothie kind of consistency. So this is still a little bit too thick for the base because then you want the other paints to be able to move in, in amongst that. So I'll just keep working this pouring medium and the flow troll in and then we'll come back and start the canvas. Okay, so all my paints have been thinned out now. Um, I've got all my colors and I've got my white base. So the way I'm gonna show you this paint in particular, they call it a Dutch pour. Now you can either pour them all into a cup, all your colors, and then pour them straight onto the canvas, or you can pour your colors on individually and layer them and then move them around and you can put different blobs of color and stuff then as well. So I'm just going to lay this base color down. Don't mind my dog in the background playing with the toy. Um, I'm just going to lay this color down in the background and I'll just use a brush or a palette knife to move it around. I'll go and grab a palette knife. Um, so we'll pour that on and then we'll add the colors. Okay, so I'm going to pour the white on. And I'm not going to pour all of it out because you don't want to, like you don't want to waste all your paint from it just falling over the sides. So you can just start manipulating it around the canvas and you'll get an idea then. So just move it around. And you'll get an idea of how much more you need to add. I'll probably end up adding all of mine to be honest. Keep a little bit there for later if we need. So just move your canvas around. You can use a palette knife and stuff like that to help manipulate it as well. Because keep in mind that you are adding more and more paint to this. So it is just going to keep pushing that paint out. Um, the other thing you can do with this once you've got your base color down. So this is your negative space. You could do black as your base as well. If you, especially if you're putting like oranges and reds and stuff like that, they can come up really nicely against that background. Um, so I don't know if you can see there's some air bubbles there. So if you've got a little um, blowtorch, mine's of course out of gas, otherwise I would have shown you can just run that over the top. That's obviously get an adult in your house to help you with that. Um, you can just run the blowtorch over the top and we'll get rid of those bubbles. It's not the end of the world though if they are in there. They just add a little bit more texture to the painting anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to slowly start adding some pores in the middle of these other colours and I am going to layer them on top of each other. So you'll get a ring in the middle of all the different colours and they will push each colour out as you keep adding to that almost knocks the whole thing over then that would have been wonderful now you can do it all in the middle you can do sections it's entirely up to you on how you want your artwork to look in the end so i'm just going to start with this one in the middle and then add ones on the ends if i feel like it just. you can also add a little bit of white to that as well if you want I'm just going to put another bit of gold there as that accent on top. All right, so we can start moving that around. Now you can agitate that however like however you like. You can also use a hairdryer, which will obviously move the paint around a little bit more aggressively. Um, but again, it's entirely up to you how you want this to look in the end. Um, each one of these artworks is always going to be so different just given the nature of the way this art is produced. So you can just see there, it's starting to push the paint out to the edges. Moving it all around. So the weight of the paint as you move them pushes the excess paint to the edges. So you can then use a brush if you like, just to get the paint edges looking neat. Again, that's entirely up to you, the look you want, how you want the canvas to come together in the end. I tend to just let the paints drip over the edge. Um, so 
just going to leave that there. I'm going to add a couple of extra colors just on the edge over there. So I'm going to add another dollop here of a few of these colors. and just manipulate this canvas around. The paint will move whichever way you tip that. Now look, you can wear gloves. I'm a bit of a grommet when it comes to art and I just let the paint pour all over me. I don't really mind too much. We will just let that drip down a little bit. Now obviously you then have to let these dry and given the nature of the artwork, it can change a little bit as it dries. So the paint can keep dripping off the edges. Like it really just does depend how thin you've made the paint in that sense. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit here on the edge. Now you can use a spoon if you wanna be a little bit more precise with stuff here. So I will just help spread that spoon bit out there. And you can put drops of color where you think it just breaks it up a little bit. So this is where you can be a lot more, um, you can make this a really individual piece and put your own bits and bobs on it as you see fit to fill in gaps and stuff like that. So this is almost finished now. We'll just, um, just knocked over some paint there. Just let that trip down that side now. Okay. So that is all the edges of that canvas now. You've got the paint drying over it. Oh, unfortunately, I've gone and gotten a hair in there. We'll have to use a tweezer or even a, um, we might even use a toothpick just to manipulate that out. I don't want it to obviously um, impact the paint before it starts drying. So I'm gonna go and wash my hands and just get a toothpick to hopefully get rid of that hair out of there. Um, and then I'll show you an aerial shot of the finished painting at the moment. Okay, another way you can manipulate the paint around is to actually use a straw and you can actually blow. I'm just doing it on the edges there to move the paint around a little bit. Um, but you can do that. I don't want to change the integrity of the way this painting has turned out. Um, so I'm actually quite happy with where the pore has fallen and the way it is falling. So I'll just show you from up here. Um, so there is still some negative space on that side and you're getting some nice blocks of colour there. I might even, no, I'm going to leave it. I don't want to overwork it. Um, so I'm just going to get, there's a little hair in there and I have my husband's actually, I'll get the hair out and my husband's actually given me one of his blow torches from work. So I'll use that to get rid of the air bubbles. Again, you don't have to do that. That is just an additional step. The air bubbles, especially once you put your artwork up on the wall, they don't really impact the artwork too much, especially if um, this is a kid's activity that you're doing as well. Um, I'm just gonna go and get that toothpick to get the hair out and then we'll blow the air bubbles out and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so that's the finished Dutch pour where I've just poured circles on top of each other and manipulated it just manually with my hands, um, bending or moving the canvas left to right, up and down just to manipulate the paint that way. We'll do another one next where we do the lines of paint and then we will use the hairdryer to move it around. I might also use the straw just to show you how much you can actually just move it around with a straw by blowing some like quite hard pressured air into it, but it will manipulate the paint enough for you to get it moving around the canvas. Um, so that's that finished one there. Once it's dried, I'll show, I'll show you what it looks like when it's up on a wall. 
Um, but yeah, that's that finished piece for now while it's wet. Okay. Another technique we can do is, um, is you put down your, your uh, negative color base, which is what I've done here again, I'm using white. And I'm gonna use the same colors as before because I don't wanna waste any paint. But we're gonna use a hairdryer in this instance to agitate and move the paint around the canvas. I'm just picking out, I'm painting outside. So there's little bits of dust and bits from the trees and the animals out here. All right, so I've put down a base of the white. And what I'm gonna do now is with the paint, I'm actually gonna pour like lines of paint. And then what you'll do is you'll use the hairdryer to blow those lines and move the color around. So I'm just gonna... Pour them again wherever you feel like you want the paint to be. I'll pour over the same lines time and time again because that's how you'll get the layers of different colors show up in all of this. So just go over these colors over the exact same spots. And you can go over them with the same colors. Like it just depends. I might do, I only did one layer of each in that, um, the round Dutch pour. Um, so I actually used a different, obviously different shaped canvas in this painting as well. So we'll just, I'm gonna layer these paints pretty much until each of the colors run out. And there is a little bit of white left. I'm gonna add a little bit of white into the mix in this too. It'll just give it an extra, like the white will be a bit of a pop in the middle. Um, you could also add one of your pigment powders or something like this at this point as well if you wanted to. Put some more gold, maybe one out there as well. So I'm just gonna keep adding these colors. Now you could do this and just agitate the canvas around as well. You don't have to use the hairdryer. You could also use, um, this is where the straw method will work really well. And you can just blow areas of the paint around. And you can see there, it does move the paint around, but I'm going to use a hairdryer in this instance. So I'm just going to finish pouring all the paints on and then we'll use the blow dryer. Okay, so that's the finished one where we've used the hair dryer to manipulate the paint. So you'll see you get a much more marbled effect this way um, and you get a bit more texture on top of the painting as well. Um, so I'm just gonna let that start to dry. Now it is dripping over the edges, so the painting may change a little bit from what you see here to its final format, but that'll be the same with the other pour, the other Dutch pour version as well. Um, so we'll just let these dry up and then I'll show you those two finished products and we'll talk about some other techniques you can do as well. I'm not gonna show you them in the video, but I can put some links in our comment section below that will link you to a few other different um, fluid art techniques. Um, and yeah, you'll be able to have a fiddle with some different formats. My advice would be start with some basic poster or acrylic paint and water and build up from there to build your techniques. Um, I've had a couple of goes at this and I've always dabbled in a little bit of art um, through school and uni and stuff. So um, I'm a bit more confident using some of the materials. But yeah, if it's definitely your first go, grab some acrylic paint. I did throw some pigment powder in there. I don't know if you can see in that lighting. There's some sections there where the pigment powder is coming through as well. Um, so the hairdryer is a really good tool to use to get this kind of effect as opposed to the block color effect that you get in the other one. Um, so we'll let these dry and then I'll show you the two um, dried paintings at the end. Okay, so I did another one on a round canvas and I used a range of blue and green colors just so you can see 
how different just changing your colors um, can make such a big difference to that artwork. So this is the same technique as that second square canvas that I did, but I have just used uh, greens and blues in this with the white negative space base as well. And I've used the hairdryer to move it around. So like the others, I'm gonna let all of these now dry. So I'll probably come back and film the ending of this for you guys tomorrow, um, just so you can see them in a much more dried state to see what the finished product will look like. And we'll run through some of the other fluid art techniques and how you can seal them um, just to help them last a little bit longer. And you can also put a resin seal and stuff like that on them. Um, I don't do that because resin can be really um, finicky to play with and get the ratios and stuff right so I'll just generally buy a gloss spray so I'll show you how to do that with um, mine once they're dry um, so yeah so that's just another hair dryer um, version there so I'll just go over this with the uh, blowtorch now to get rid of any air bubbles in there and we'll let them dry overnight and I'll come back tomorrow So while we wait for the paintings to dry, I've just put a clear sealant on them just to give them a bit of a gloss finish effect. And just, it also helps seal the paint in and the paint won't discolor. Um, and it just gives the paintings a bit of a protective um, coating on them. So I'll just go through with the fluid art. The art that I did today was a Dutch pour technique. Oh, sorry, that I did a few days ago. They're Dutch pour techniques. Um, so one was just pouring on top of each other and maneuvering around. And then the other one was obviously with the hairdryer. There are a few different techniques you can do with fluid art. So if you are interested in expanding that, um, upon, like beyond what we've done today, there's a dirty pour, there's what they call a flip cup where you literally just put all your colors in a cup, flip the paint, uh, paint, flip the paint over that is in the cup and then maneuver the canvas around. There's a puddle pour, there's a swipe, there's what they call tree ring, there's a balloon smash where you actually use a blown up balloon to maneuver the paint around. There's controlled marble pour, there's a string pull pouring. So you pour the paint on and then you actually pull a piece of string through it and the string is what makes the pattern. There's a resin pour, there's the Dutch pour that we did and also the dip pouring. So there is a, like, there is a multitude of different pouring techniques. Um, the Dutch is probably the most user friendly and it's probably the least time consuming as well. Um, so that's just a little bit of a rundown of any extra ones. If there's any other of those fluid arts that you would like to see, just put it in the comment section below and we'll see if we can get a video organized for you. I'll go and grab the dried paintings now. I'm hoping the sealant's dried and we'll show you the finished products. The paintings, well, two of the paintings have dried and I've actually just sprayed them with a clear acrylic gloss paint that you can get from Bunnings. It was 10 or $15 for the can. So you can just see, it just helps, especially when you've got metallic, it helps bring the metallic color out. So I only sprayed these about 15 minutes ago. That's the Dutch pour where we've just manipulated it with our hands. And I've got the round Dutch pour here that we use um, the hairdryer on. So the other square one is actually still drying because I'd had the paint so thick. So again, I've sprayed this with the acrylic gloss, gloss coat and it just helps bring the colors out a little bit more. So when you've got it up on the wall and the sun will hit it, it'll look different from every single angle that you look at. So that's the two finished paintings there. The other third one's over there. I'll take a snippet of that um, and I'll put a photo of each individual painting at the end of the video. So that is your fluid art tutorials with two different, well, it's the same technique. So we used a Dutch pour for both, but um, we just use a hairdryer to manipulate them in one and we've just manipulated it with our hands and moved the canvas around on the other. And we've sealed it with a clear gloss spray paint. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you've got any questions about the paintings, just put some comments in our comment section below. And also in the comment section below, tell us any other tutorials or activities that you'd like to see on our Melton Learning Directory YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.